Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And we've seen videos before of the wing shoulder bolts, but today we want to talk about the other side of the equation. The wing shoulder bolts goes into a blind capture, and that goes in through a close tolerance hole because those are close tolerance bolts in the spar. And when they get wallowed out, they have to go oversized. So we're going to talk about that and show you a bad example. Stay tuned. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now it's critical when a bolt goes into the spar that the hole doesn't get wallowed out because that close tolerance fit is what holds it all together. If it gets wallowed out, you can go to an oversized bolt. Now the standard shoulder bolt in our wings is a 9 16 head but some have a 5 8 inch head and those are the next oversized bolt. But once they get wild out past that, then they have to be over drilled through the spar. They have to be reamed to get the precision hole back. And then there is a metal disc that goes in there, allows you to go back to the standard size bolt. Now that material and the reams are all are available from Fletch Air in Houston. So contact them for the little disc and for the reams and the instructions of how to do it. David prefers the airplane to come there, but he has been known to loan his tools. So now let's take a look at the two shoulder bolts that came out of this one side of a wing and a tiger. You can see the one on the right is the proper size shoulder bolt. What in the heck is on the left? That bolt is not an AN6. That bolt looks like an AN8 or bigger. So it's way too large for the job and it's probably not getting a tight capture. So now let's take a look inside the spar and see how they made it all work. Now the blind captures are riveted through the spar and through a doubler plate and they sit on the doubler on the inside. Now these are all curved pieces and they're the same thickness as a spar. So if you're doing a tiger spar, it's a .303 thickness disc you need. If you're doing a cheetah, it'll be a different size. But anyway, that's what you need to do to get the proper size hole because again, these are close tolerance measurements and you don't want to have any wiggle in there because when you have wiggle, you're going to get wallowing and you're going to be ruining your spar. And for those of you who may not know it, spars for tigers are getting extremely hard to come by. Uh, Fletch Air has a several thousand hour spar. We have a 5,000 hour spar and there's a few others out there, but folks, when those are gone, they're gone. And so now we can see how large the hole is in the spar. And it is going to need a filler disc uh, to bring it down to a standard size. Now this has been drilled so large, they're probably going to have to machine a new disc to precision measurements to get it back in there and save the spar. So that's a little caveat for you folks. Put that in your back pocket. Remember, always take care of your spars. Check those shoulder bolts at your annuals and when they're required as part of the AD from back in 95. We hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. So here are the cute kittens all being quiet on the sofa on this nice cold day. Thought you'd enjoy it. So take a look at these little beauties. They're 8 and 10 months old each.